Hello, hello, welcome back for tip number 22 from Aletha Salter's book, Raising Drug-Free Kids, 100 Tips for Parents. I'm T, your joyful parent guide and harmonizer. And so last time we looked at tip number 21, which was be patient with temper tantrums. Of course, we're in the chapter from birth to age three. And so today's tip, number 22, is don't force your child to eat. Don't force your child to eat. And sometimes that can really go against the grain because we were forced to eat, right? Like don't waste your food, eat your vegetables, remember your carrots, whatever it was for us. But it can be such an ingrained um, type of thing that we don't question it because it must have been right. It was there from the start for us, so deep in there. It's unconscious in there. So we don't question it, but here is a really, really important thing that we bypass when we go into that forcing them to eat. We bypass the fact that our babies and toddlers are born with an innate sense of what their body needs. What are the nutrients? How much food? Which kinds of food do they need at which particular stages of growth? So like the toddlers might go on a little bit of a, a binge on fats or something when there's like a big uh, brain development phase going on because the brain is made up largely of fat. So things like that. And when we say, oh, that's too much, you know, that's too much of that, have more of this, we are, we're bypassing that. And we are thinking that we know better when actually most likely we don't. Now, this is sort of, uh, you know, if, you're, if your toddler is not growing within the bounds of normal growth or not gaining weight, um, you know, gaining weight way outside the scale of, you know, what is sort of normal and accepted, whether it's too little or too much, you know, then obviously, you know, you want to get some medical attention. But I'm talking about most of the people which fit into that big standard deviation there and, and, and all of us kind of overriding, thinking that we know better because we, we have the best intentions for our little guys, right? Our little gals. Um, so we don't want to override because we want them to be like a self-regulated eater when they are 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, right? We want them to be self-regulated. And there's three things that we do, we can do unintentionally. We can set the stage for three uh, unwanted consequences when we force them to eat a certain amount or a certain kind of thing. Number one is that we can uh, we can unconsciously and unintentionally foster a habit of overeating. You know, eat all your food. Well, okay, I want mom to be happy with me, right? I, I want to be loved here. I want to belong. I want mommy to be happy with me. So I'm going to eat everything on my plate. I'm going to override my body's signals and my body's messages, and I'm going to eat more than my body's telling me that I need. How many of us have a habit of overeating? Hello! <laughs> like, that's what we're doing to our kids, is we are, uh, you know, grooming them for that, okay? Number two is, it a ha is a, we're, we're cultivating a habit of their disregarding their own judgment, disregarding their body's own signals which is even separate. I mean, I kind of lumped them together there in the beginning, but you know, habit of overeating, habit of overriding their own internal signals. So giving over judgment to you, you tell me I need to do this. Okay, I'll do it. 
maybe somebody when they're 15 is going to tell them, hey, you need to try this drink. Do you want them to say yes to that? Or do you want them to say, you know what, I'm good. You know, and if, uh, if that's really important to you, then I'm out of here. I think I, I know. I know what my answer is, and I think I know what yours is, too. Number three, in the moment, especially, you know, as they get to toddler stage, right? That's when they're, they're saying no. They're practicing saying no. You are creating conflict. You are creating, you're setting the stage for conflict between you and your young child. And so you are creating distance between them, which as they grow, you know, maybe, maybe things will change and it's only, you know, it's only one day, it's only one thing, but that's how habits get started, right? And so you're creating conflict for them. You're, you're creating distance between you and them. And how is that going to show up? later in their lives you know whether it's when they're seven or when they're 17 is it going to show up in rebellion that kind of a response is it going to show up in terms of their withdrawing from you is it going to show up in terms of their sneaking around to do what they want to do because they know that you won't be happy with them and they don't want to um, worsen the conflict. They, they're not interested in having that big conflict. So that's, um, that is the nuts and bolts of, uh, of this tip, number 22, don't force your child to eat. And I don't know about you, but it sounds, you know, it sounds like a good thing don't force your child to eat okay yeah that makes sense but really when you take a look at it there's a lot of underpinnings there's a lot of unconscious beliefs that we bring to these reflexive commands that we have for our kids regardless of their age but I'm just looking you know be patient with temper tantrums was um, was the last one, number 21. Number 19, allow your toddler to say no. When we reflexively come at them when they're saying no, when we are not patient with temper tantrums, we have a set of beliefs around that and there's an energy to those thoughts and beliefs and they are going to have an energetic response so if it sounds a little far-fetched that we're creating distance with our kids when we're forcing them to eat against their will it's not it's just looking deeper at what is happening we're looking into the energetics of what is happening versus the behavior and the words so that's what I think I'll leave you with today. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you, if you listen to the replay, hashtag ease, I forgot to say that in the beginning. I'll try to remember next time. But, um, you know, I love any and all of the DMs and comments that you have. So keep them coming. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.